and we'll get started. So allow yourself to find your chair and settle into your seat. Uh, taking a nice deep breath and feeling your sit bones. When we can connect our sit bones to the chair, sometimes you have to pull a little bit of flesh away, but when you can connect your sit bones to the chair, then your pelvis is in the perfect neutral position for then your spine to be tall out of that pelvis. So you're just gonna rock around on that pelvis till you find it. The other thing it does is that it enforces you to use core muscles. Because whenever we sort of roll back and we're sitting on bum cheeks, the core muscles can, cannot engage. So every time we find those sit bones, we're doing two things. We're helping the length of our spine and we're engaging core muscles. And then mess with your feet. Can you find where they feel like they can just soften themselves into the floor, all four corners of those feet, just relaxing and resting into the mat, the rug or the floor underneath you? And then exhale. Feel the breath relax out of your body and feel the next breath pull in. The crown of your head floating up to the ceiling and lifting your shoulders to the ears, rolling them down your back. Shake your head a little bit, nod your head. Just feel the head float to the top of the spine and feel like it just kind of lands there. The chin is not lifted. It's not dropped. It feels like it's parallel to the floor. Perhaps you close your eyes. Just allow your breath to come in and out through the nose. We're just going to set the intention for this hour that we spend this hour in service of our greater good. We spend this hour unrestricting tight places in our body so that the prana, our life force, can move more freely within us. So that we can reach our breath into tight and um, gripping spaces and dissipate the tension that sits there. And experience by the end of our class, a body fully receiving uh, the full potential of each breath that we take. What lofty goals, hey? What lofty, sweet, beautiful goals we have for ourselves today. Your breath just getting longer and slower than it's been so far. Consciously deepening it and slowing it down. Already noticing the expansion and the retraction of each breath that you take. Good. So let your eyes drift open. Lift your shoulders right up to your ears and then just do like three or four shoulder rolls. Nice, and let your elbows roll out to your sides. Bring your attention to the shoulder blades on your back body. Now I want you to feel those shoulder blades slide away from your spine as your elbows come together and then feel those shoulder blades tighten towards your spine. So what if your rib cage here could stay still and just your shoulder blades found the way that they could um, move freely on the back ribs. 
so that they could pull and push the muscles, helping them find elasticity and strength. These ones tend to be tight. So every time we make this movement, a few muscles have to release in order to let the shoulder blades slide and a few muscles have to pull. So just notice that gentle movement happening. Good. And then bring your hands down here. We need to drop our chin to the chest and then inhale, look to the ceiling. Drop chin to chest. Do this with movement, do this with breath. One of these movements is an inhale, one of these movements is an exhale. Come back to center, drop right ear to right shoulder. Back up to center, left ear to left shoulder, couple breaths. Back up to center. Nice. Elbows come out again. Okay, so this time you're going to be careful of your shoulders. So if there's anything limiting you lifting them up, your elbows higher than your shoulders, then you'll stop and you'll just make the movement happen. Elbows below shoulders. Sliding those shoulder blades kind of in circular motions, like tip, tick tocking them back and forth on the back body. Inhale, let them slide outward. Exhale, the tips point towards the spine. Thinking of those back ribs. Hard on the shoulders, isn't it? There's a lot of work happening here. Yeah, sometimes our necks feel like the necks have to do the work. Yeah. Inhale, exhale. Good. And then bring those hands down. Uh, take the chin to the chest and then sweep it up towards the right shoulder. Draw it to chest, sweep it to left shoulder. So we just start to play with the back of the neck, letting it have a little bit of unrestriction happening there. Back, chin drops to chest, head floats to the top edge of your spine. Nice work. Roll your shoulders open, let the hands um, rest down beside you. Good. And now squeeze the palms and open them wide. Squeeze them and open them wide. Keep going, good. Roll the wrists, right. Roll the wrists, left. Nice. Bring the palms together in front of you and then you just sort of, um, roll them. I'm going to just bring them here. Well, maybe, oh, maybe you can still see them just fine. It's like the backs of the hands come together down facing and then the palms come back together front facing. Roll. Whatever direction you're going, change it. Yeah, nice work. Shoulders roll down the back again. We're constantly making this movement happen. Good and then hands rest down beside you. Oh, spread fingers really, really wide apart, and then tip the fingers towards the back wall. Yeah. Lift your arms and start to pull the shoulder blades, squeezing them together so that it feels like your palm is not flat, it's flat to the sky, right? Palms pulled back, wrists bent, shoulder blades squeezing together, and then Wrap your hands around you like a big teddy bear hug and exhale into a fold. And then inhale and opposite arm goes underneath. Exhale, big hug. Inhale, exhale. I've got my right arm on top in that hug. Open up. This time I've got my left arm on top as I have. Breathe in. Right arm on top, hug, breathe out, breathe in. Left arm on top, hug, breathe in. Right arm on top, again, big inhale, left arm on top. Yeah, one more time each side, we're gonna go right arm on top. Big opening, left arm on top. 
and then come back to center. Shoulders roll down the back, hands can land on your lap. Slide the fingers to the end of your knees and just begin to cat and cow here. So the whole spine just feels like it's getting a nice, sweet release. Every time you move forward and back, just allowing yourself to relax, move into all those little places of tension and let them go. If you've been to class enough times that you could just close your eyes and listen to my words and for the most part know what I'm saying, feel free. You might find that you have to like peek your eyes open and watch every once in a while to see if what's going on is really what, what I'm saying is really what I'm doing. <laughs> you know me, sometimes my cues are a little bit uh, novel, they're interesting. Bring yourself back to center, good. Shake your head gently, roll those shoulders gently, good. Hands come to heart and then we're just gonna twist right and left. If you keep your thumbs connected to your breastbone, if you keep the chin floating on top of the fingertips, you won't be able to go too far, which means we're just isolating the mid back. Up to center and rotate. Up to center and rotate. Yeah. Come back to center and let those hands rest down. Side bending now. This time let's just put our fingertips on the shoulders because we've already done a lot of shoulder work today so we don't need to sway our arms. I'd like you to um, drop the right elbow down towards the floor. Inhale, come to center, drop the left elbow. You can lift the right. So here you're thinking of the rib cage. Can you open up the left ribs as you lean right? Come back to center. As you exhale, feel the body lengthening down the side. Inhale, bring yourself back to center. Feel the distance between the hip and the armpit growing longer. And bring it back. Sweet, smooth distance there. Remember that we move the spine in all the directions it's meant to move in every yoga class. So we always do flexion and extension, which is forward and backward movement. This is lateral movement. This is side to side bending and reaching. And the other one we do is twisting. So we twist both right and left. And when we remind our body that it's capable of all those movements, for the rest of the day now, you've triggered and turned on muscles that sometimes our ordinary day-to-day -day movement doesn't turn on. Good. So let yourself come back to center. The shoulders relax again. They drop down your back. The back of your neck is nice and loose as your hands rest down onto your lap. Sweet. Feet press into the floor. Let's extend the right leg out in front and set it down. Extend the left leg out in front and set it down. So there's a, the leg needs to lift a little bit and then the foot kicks out, heel drops to floor, foot sets down. So it's lift, reach, drop the foot, set it down. Lift, reach, drop the foot, set it down. You don't really need your hands. They can just stay in your lap. Yeah, it's funny how much work that is, isn't it? Lift. Extend and set it down. Extend and set down. Reach the crown of your head up to the ceiling, roll the shoulders down the back, and then just start to toe tap. Toe tap to the right. Toe tap to the left. Breathe while you're doing this, okay? We're trying to get some nice movement happening in those hip creases. Sweet. 
sweet. And then come back to center. Sweep your knees right over to the right edge of your mat or your chair, good. And now slide the left bum cheek off the chair. Take the left leg back behind you. Now remember this is the one where you can stretch the leg back as far as you want or you can let the knee be bent. So you're just going to do whatever feels. This front muscle is getting a nice workout regardless. Press and release that back heel and you'll feel the stretch come all the way up into the front of this hip. Press and release. If you're active today, you want to do some more work, lift this hand up to the sky. If you want to lift both hands, go ahead. Breathe and release. Breathe. Yeah. Gentle push into that back leg. Good job. Yeah. And release those hands down. Sweep that back foot forward. Let's walk our toes over to the other side. Once you land on that other side, Drop one bum cheek off the end of the chair and sweep the right leg back behind you. Same rules here. So that back hand can be draped on the back of the chair. Front hand can be on your hip. They can both go up to the sky or just one of them can. You play wherever you can. Now you are pressing and releasing that back heel. Press and release. Yeah. Feel the stretch just activate all the way up through the legs. Breathe. Breathe, breathe, nice work. And release, the knees can come to center and let yourself float forward. Your uh, legs are a little bit wide and I want you to just do kind of big circles with your spine, like you're stirring a big pot of soup. My chair is all creaky, so that's the noise that you may be hearing in the background is the fact that my old um, reclaimed banker's chairs that I use for dining room chairs in my house. They are not quite as sturdy as they once were. Change directions if you haven't already. Yeah, good. Now come to center. If your bum is not on the edge of your chair, you're sliding it forward. Feet are still wide. Bring the hands to the ends of your knees. Ready? Right shoulder drops down into the center between your knees. Left shoulder drops down. Okay, so find what's comfortable for you and then move back and forth. Draw down. Lift up. Draw down. Lift up. Nice movement of that spine. Yeah. and then come back up to center, sweep. Feet walk back to the middle, okay? Your arms will open wide. Think of the shoulders being really soft down your back as your arms open wide. And then bring your right uh, arm right across the body and the left elbow comes up and holds it. Just gently pull, gently pull your right arm in closer to your chest using that strength of the left arm. Breathe, breathe, one more. Open your arms up wide, left arm crosses your body, right scoops underneath the elbow, pulling the left arm closer to your chest. Smoothing out your breath, long, it's relaxed, it's reaching into all those tight areas. Every time you find a stretch sensation, in your body, just imagine that you finding a new pocket, a new area of the body to invite your breath into. Yeah, and relax that down. Okay, you know the movement that you do to start a lawnmower? Feet are a bit wide and you reach like across body almost and your hand holds that uh, lawnmower handle and then you pull up with your elbow. So I want you to reach and pull back and reach and pull back. And from the seated position, we're just giving ourselves a twist. Breathe. Which one's the inhale and which way is the exhale for you? So just notice, are you breathing in or out when you reach? What about when you pull back? 
There isn't a right answer for this one. So it just flows, you go, okay, good, last one. And then come back to center and drop that arm down. Just notice for a second how much prana, how much energy, life force you can feel moving down this arm that we haven't yet felt in the left. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the other side. We're going to take the left hand way across the body. So it's going down and over the body and then the elbow pulls up and away. Reach and pull. Imagine the tension of a lawnmower underneath that pull. So the hand imagines that it's pulling against the traction, the friction of that lawnmower handle, that lawnmower string rope, whatever it is, pull cord. Flow with your breath, reaching, retracting. I think I am one of these people who it takes me this many pulls to start a lawnmower. So uh, let's do two more. Reach and retract and reach and retract. Nice work. Again, shoulder rolls backwards. Always feels so nice. Yeah, good. Bring your feet back together in front of you. And your bum is slid right to the edge of your chair. You can feel your sit bones catching the edge of your, the chair, but your thighs are not touching it anymore. Start to lean forward. And then if it feels like the legs aren't in the right position to sort of support your body weight, move your feet. For me, they need to almost, the feet need to come a little bit closer to me and then lean forward more. Yeah. Start to notice your tendency right now. Does some of you want to push really hard into your hands? If that's the tendency, just notice if you can, instead of pushing into your hands, if you can push the feet into the floor. Yeah. Get the feet feeling really active and strong, the legs strong underneath your hands. And then instead of pushing hands into legs, push feet into the floor, lift your bum. And your hands can just slide down onto your legs somewhere. So the crown of your head is facing to the camera now, facing to the computer. And reach the crown of your head forward, push the sit bones away. Well, I guess that's if you're facing the computer. Breathe there. Now gentle bend into the knees and inhale your hands all the way up. Drop them down to your heart. Good. Inhale your hands all the way up. Drop them down to your heart. Yeah, breathe in again. And out. And in again. And out. Nice work. Okay, we're gonna come stand behind the chair. So for those of you who wanna use the chair for a little bit of balance, that's why it's there. If you feel like you don't need it, then don't worry about it. You can stand wherever you want in your room. Standing behind your chair, just so that if you want the fingertips to touch something for balance, it's there. Take a step back with your right foot. Push that heel down into the floor and let your left knee bend. Straighten up your spine. If there's any support necessary here, that chair is available. If it doesn't feel necessary, the hands can float up to the sky. Now we play with this all the time in class. If one fingertip with 1% of your body weight down through that fingertip, all of a sudden makes everything a hundred times more stable, choose that. Choose that because watch your breath. Put your finger on the chair and find your breath. Take your finger off the chair and find your breath. Choose the one where your breath is better. Don't choose the one that the body looks like the movement's bigger. We always choose higher breath first. Good. One more. Nice. And then the fingers can release down. If you comfortable, the hands can come to hips. Again, keep one finger on the chair. Straighten that knee and bend that knee. Straighten that knee, bend that knee. Okay. Now with that movement happening, we're going to put hands back in that cactus pose that we did seated. Elbows together. Elbows apart. Elbows together. Elbows apart. Can you breathe here? One's an inhale, one's an exhale. I don't care which one. 
Move with smoothness. Move with breath. Yes. And then bring hands back to heart. Bend that knee. Straighten the front leg. Lengthen through the crown and just let yourself fall forward with straight legs. The only time you wouldn't keep the legs perfectly straight is if they lock. Back heel presses into floor, folding yourself forward. Imagining the spine straight. Yeah. There's a nice stretch here through the front leg, sometimes the back calf as well. Breathe. Inhale and come all the way up. Hands come to hips. Drop your front knee bent again. And then as you take the palms down, you just begin to lean the whole body forward over that bent front knee. So you, you picture that your fingertips and your shoulder blades and the back of your skull is reaching towards that back heel. And you picture that the crown of your head and the front knee is stretching forward. Like you can feel lots of muscles working in your body, but you're in perfect stillness. The whole front side of your body reaching forward, reaching up. The whole back side of your body reaching downward, reaching backward. Good. Hands release to heart, straighten that front leg. Yay. Okay. Testing to see if Jill can remember all that sequence on the left. Step forward and back with your left. Front knee bends. Okay. Let's test here because we often find our balance is completely different on right than it is left. So just check fingers on chair. We're thinking about if we're lifting hands to ceiling or not, and we're noticing our breath. Is your breath better with just one percentage of your weight finding balance through the fingertip? What changes when you don't use the chair for balance? Maybe you lift one hand, maybe you try both. Just notice, remember you prioritize a bigger breath over a bigger movement. The movement doesn't matter. If you're not breathing, you've just ixnayed all of the ability of your body to absorb the benefits that you're creating. Figured it out? So good, hey? Yeah. Okay, bent front knee choosing. So perhaps you leave one finger on the chair. Perhaps you bring both arms out. So you get to choose. The elbows lift and lower only in whatever range of motion doesn't bring discomfort to the shoulders or neck. And the front knee bends and straightens. Yeah. Yeah. So just move as you're able to move. Smooth, steady. Keeping one hand touching, if that feels more in control, in balance for you, breathe, 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 nice. Settle it down and then straighten that front leg. Your hands can come to the hips, lengthen, and the flat spine lowers down. At some point you might use the back of the chair to just offer your arm support. Reach through the crown of your head, breathe into the legs. The legs will be feeling a nice opening here. Go to that, imagine um, that imagery of your breath reaching into all the areas that feel tight and just allowing your breath to open and relax those areas of tightness. The back of those legs. Nice work. So press into the soles of the feet, especially if your arms are really resting now, press into the soles of the feet. Feel the core engaged so you're not pushing off with your arms and then lift your core back up again. Sweet. We bend the front knee again. Shoulders roll down the back, hands can stretch down and then the whole front body travels forward. The fingertips and shoulder blades and back of the skull reach towards the heel. Stretch the crown of your head forward. The whole front body feels like it's stretching and reaching to the front side of your room. The heel, the hips, the fingertips all feel like they're stretching to the back side. This is isometric. Nothing's moving, but everything is reaching. Everything is turned on. Breathe deep. 
Breathe deep. Good work. We release the hands, press into the feet, straighten those legs. Good. I think I did everything on the left that I did on the right. Bend into the knees and step forward. You guys will have to send me a comment afterwards if I forget poses on the left. Okay, come and stand right behind our chair. Let's do some of our ballet movements. So you're standing behind a chair and you're just lifting and lowering your heels. I'm going to move a bit so that you can see more of my movement. Remember that as you come up and down, we're trying not to capsize those heels outward. Good. You only come up as small as you need to. We've noticed, uh, everyone who's a regular in class has noticed a, a huge improvement in ankle strength with this exercise from the day we started it and um, how much uh, ability they have have to just go in that linear motion and not capsize. Good. That feels about right for the back of the body. You now open your legs a bit wider. Toes point outward and then bend your knees. Lift your heels. Straighten your legs. Heels down. Bend your knees. Lift your heels. Straighten your legs. Heels down. Good. Breathe in and out. In and out. Yeah. Now, always in class, almost the funniest part when I do this one is when I try and do the reverse of it. It seems like it's always a mess for me. So we bend and lift it. Okay, so this time we have to lift and then bend and then lower and straighten. Lift, then bend, and lower and straighten. Good. Lift, bend, lower, straighten. Lift, bend, lower, straighten. Last one. Lift, bend, lower, straighten. Sweet work. Toes point forward. Speed a little bit wider. Let yourself take hips right and left as if you're sliding your pelvis back and forth on a sliding door track, right? Like the one out to your back deck. And that sometimes we wanna feel like there's a twist in there, like we go so far and then we can't go any further so there's a twist, but just don't let yourself twist. Yeah. Nice work. It's coming right from the bottom of the hips. The bottom of the hips feels like it's sliding back and forth on the leg bones. Nice. Okay, back to stillness. I'm still going to be able to use the chair. I want you to stay in about this position. Turn your right toes out. Oh. I'm going to I'm going to do mine the other way to start. So turn your left toes. For me, whichever toes, how about this? Whichever toes are facing the chair. We'll do that way first and then you can watch this pose and then when we turn around with your back to the camera or however you're working it, you'll be able to see better. Or it won't matter, it won't matter if you can see the second time. Toes pointing to chair, back toes pointing forward. Just let your hips kick as far back as they can go. So this is lateral movement, right? We're trying to get into the side body. You can feel it coming up that side hip. Now your movement is up um, the sides of your ribs, the side, the lateral lines, the right and left. And what we often do is we collapse. These right, these top ribs pop out. This side, top side of our body gets really long, but this one's really crunched up. As you do this pose, your goal is to keep length on whatever side of your body is facing downward. So it feels just as long on the bottom as it does on the top. Good. Whatever you want to do with your arms, one on the chair, top hand can be up to the sky or hand on your hip. Reach. Yeah, breathe, nice. Now super important when we come out of this pose to find your feet, find the strength of your legs. And now take the back hip and push everything back to center using your hip strength. Fingers come down. Now I want you to um, 
step forward and take the other leg back. I'm actually gonna move my chair so that, uh, that I can still face the camera. And I'm going to step back with the opposite foot, right toes po pointing to the chair, left toes pointing forward, hips kick left, hips kick left, reach, reach, reach. Stretch to the crown of your head, keep the right line and left line of your body even so that you're not capsizing, right? You're not long on the top and squished up on the bottom. We've got equal lines. Bottom hand can be resting on chair. Top hand can be on hip or reaching for sky. Breathe. Stretch your breath into all those areas that feel tight and restricted right now. Tons of them in the body. Breathe. Yeah, super good work. Super good work. Yeah. Okay, feet press into the floor. Really activate the strength of your legs. Now bring your awareness to this outside hip. It's almost like a bulldozer has pushed up to this outside hip and all your strength to bring you back up comes from the movement of that. Yes, just like that, good. And then bring your feet back together. Sweet. Okay, turn to face the back of that chair one more time. Hands on the chair and then let yourself lower. So you're going into a nice spinal stretch here. The hands can be really wide on the chair if that's easier for your shoulders. You might even find that you're close so the elbows can be bent if the shoulders are all right. Walk your heels so they're right underneath your bum. Notice if you need a bend in the backs of your knees. Notice if it feels like you just need to let the chest lift a little higher. You want to be able to breathe here as you stretch it out. Pushing the sit bones back behind you, tractioning your spine, putting a little movement in it if it feels good. Maybe there's a sway in the hips. Yeah. And inhale and come forward. Ha, ah, so good. Just do a couple circles with each shoulder, backwards, backwards, backwards. For some of you, that's a pretty um, limiting movement. It doesn't feel so good, in which case your circles could be a bit smaller. They wouldn't go all the way around your back. Doesn't matter. So good. All right. Okay, so we're coming to our last um, pose. We're going to do a balance today in standing, and then we'll choose whether or not you want to go down to the floor. So again, we're going to use that principle of breath and put one, one finger on chair, okay? We like when we do balancing poses to really turn on the haunches, right? So that what we're doing when we lift one foot off the floor, the opposite I call it the haunch. It's like this whole outside edge of the thigh works really hard. We make that happen by avoiding tipping the hips out and by avoiding shrugging our shoulders. Okay, so you're going to avoid those two things. Left foot grounds down. Right heel starts to rise and just notice, can you keep yourself from capsizing that hip out and can you keep the shoulders and the neck soft? Roll onto the ball of the foot. Come up onto the tippy toe. Yeah, and then as you're ready, that knee can lift up in front of you. Maybe, maybe the toe needs to stay on the floor. Let it open to the side. In the end, you're gonna choose where this right foot connects, anywhere from toe touching floor all the way up to heel above the knee. And then check your breath. Check your breath. Notice that finger touching the chair. Big, smooth, bold breath. Shoulders dropping down your back. Noticing that finger and what it's providing you in terms of balance and control. Because when you have a smooth, deep breath, you have better balance and control. Yeah, so good. Finger presses down and that foot 
grounds down. Now you know you've done that pose right if when you're done it, that whole side of your hip, not just one spot, but this whole side is responding going, oh, thank God that's over. That's what we want. Okay, come to the other side. So I'm grounding the right foot here. I'm keeping the shoulders and neck soft. I'm gonna stop my body from doing that capsize through the hip and slowly, go slowly so you notice how your body wants to cheat. Lift your left heel. Draw up onto the ball of the foot. Roll forward onto the tippy toe. Lift the knee. Yeah. And then roll this leg out to the side. Know that the toe can still be touching the floor if that's better for you. And then slide that foot to land somewhere on the inside of the right leg. Yeah. Okay. Play with this hand that's by the chair. Find a beautiful, smooth, strong breath. Make the weight that's in through your palm be as light as possible with still the biggest breath possible. work. <laughs> Drop the hands, lower the foot, and know for sure if that haunch is happy that you're done that pose, it means you did it right. So then just take the feet a little bit hip width apart and do some rolls. You're doing hula hoops. You can even like lift your elbows if you want. Hula hoop properly so that you don't knock that hula hoop out of space. And then hula hoop the other way. When's the last time you hula hooped? Like, for real, that'd be a good sport to take up now that we have to self-isolate. We could practice it and no one would be able to watch and laugh at us. Sweet. Okay. So for the last 16 minutes, you get to choose if you're going to come down to the floor. So if not, you are going to sit in your chair and I'm going to give you movements to do from the chair. Okay. I'm going to move my chair over so that I can try and show you both. If you're going to the floor, we're going to lie on our side to start. So for those of you who are trying to figure out what that's going to be like in your house, I might um, give myself a big pillow and I might give myself, just because my floor is hard, I might give myself something to lie on that feels nice, right? So you choose. There's the modification for uh, not having a spongy floor underneath me. And I want you to lie sideways. So remember if you come down onto your side and this shoulder feels really not happy being on the floor, you would put something extra underneath your rib cage. I've got a yoga mat here. I put that there just so that the rib cage and the pillow almost form a hole for your shoulder to fall into. Knees are bent, same thing underneath your hip. If your hip doesn't like being on the floor in this position, put extra padding underneath your hip. Palms reach out in front of each other. Inhale, hand to sky. Exhale, open wide. Inhale, hand to sky, and release. So you're doing this in whatever range of motion allows you to not bring the knee and hip with you. If you are in your chair right now, your arms are out, open, and twist. So the first part for doesn't matter if you're on the floor is hand lifting to ceiling, hand moving 90 degrees to the side. And then the second part is the chest turning and opening. It's a twist. Yes. Breathe in and open. Nice. Breathe in and open. Yeah. Good. Release that. Bring your hands back together. So next movement. 
I want you to come to the hips. Take a big breath, relax all of these muscles through the shoulders. Let that top hand just rest in. Maybe the bottom one comes into where it's comfortable. Do whatever you need to. This pose is for the legs. So you could even use your top hand to feel that hip and make sure that it feels um, stable. It's not going to move under your fingertips. The top thigh lifts and lowers. Lifts and lowers. Yeah. So this is small Suzanne Summers. Suzanne Summers would make you lift really high. I'm going to make you lift small because I don't want you to be tipping your whole body back and forth. I don't want your hips and back to move. I want you to isolate the inner and the outer thigh, the top of this leg and the bottom of this leg, and it should be starting to burn. Yeah, I think that's enough. I didn't show you the chair. If you were doing that seated, literally, that's it. All right, everyone. When you're ready, one more for the um, arms. So you're lying on your side, top hand sweeps along the floor and then starts reaching back behind you and then sweeps forward again. So instead of um, going up to the ceiling, this hand just sweeps along the floor, reaches back as soon as it gets into that sticky area, turns around and comes back. Breathe. Reach and release. Do two more. If you are seated in a chair, this one is the one that looks like a backstroke. If it feels possible from a chair to be able to do the whole circle, then you go ahead. If you get back here and it's like, then bend the elbow and pull your arms through it with the bent elbow or turn around. Okay, either one is possible. Nice work. Relax that. Okay, we're gonna move to the other side. So you choose how that works best for you. If you're facing the camera and it's best for you to take your pillow to the other end of your mat like me, then do that. If it's best for you to um, move your camera, move that. If you're staying in the chair, you got it easy for us today, okay? As you come to your sideline position on the other side, remember just take time to put props underneath your rib cage or hips, supporting anything that needs to be supported under the shoulder. So putting extra support right under the ribs lets a hole be created for the shoulder. Putting extra padding underneath the hips can be nice and supportive there. Palm on palm. Inhale, head to sky. Exhale, whole rib cage turns up to the ceiling. Inhale, hands to sky. Palm comes back down again. Good, breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Choosing what movements feel best in your body. Knowing Yeah, that with the first movement is just for the arm and the second movement is the twist for the spine. Yeah, nice work. And then bring everything back to center, relaxing it, settling the whole upper body, Remember, you're going to go move in your hips now. If you're seated in a chair, all you're doing is opening and closing that um, opposite leg. If you're on the floor, the pelvis stays still. The spine stays still. All we're doing is lifting the top thigh and putting it back down again. It's a clamshell movement. The ankles stay connected. We only lift up as far as we can without the whole spine and hips twisting, that stays still. It's up and down. Now, if we make this small enough, we will get some burn happening in the legs. That's okay. Breathe. 
Breathe, yeah. My burn is in really interesting areas today. Soften your body and make sure that you're not bracing from other areas, that that top leg is doing the work. Good. And release, <sighs> let that leg rest. Arms land down again. You're gonna do that sweep. As soon as you get into the sticky area, turn it around. Reach up and turn it around. So as soon as two things happen, as soon as you hit the sticky area, your breath just stops. It gets really tight. It won't let you go further. So notice you're getting cues from two different things. One is from the sensation of your body, but the other cue is coming from your breath. Remember if you're seated, this is like you doing the backstroke. Do whatever version of it feels good in the body. I have lots of stickiness in this right shoulder today. Yeah. Nice work. So as you complete this, the palms can come down. Now, quite honestly, Shavasana can feel really nice on your side. So if you feel like this is a comfortable pose for you right now and you can be still here and be in comfort while you're in that stillness, then you're, you're welcome to stay here. If you wanna rearrange your props in any way to make yourself more comfortable, you might choose to put something under your knees and lie on your pillow. You might also choose to use that chair to bring it so that it is underneath your calves. And this is a super good position for lots of us. You just kind of have to play with it so that where your knees fall in, everything feels comfortable. If the chair is too far away or too close, both can be not as relaxing. So you have to mess with the distance of the chair. And this is if flat on your back feels okay. I have to say that flat on our backs is getting to be more and more challenging for our culture because we, um, we actually don't lie flat on our backs ever. We have these gorgeous beds with nice comfy mattresses. We have gorgeous pillows that build our backs up. And then we sit in cars and chairs and couches that don't ask us to have a tall spine. So literally lying flat on your back is <laughs> like a difficult pose for some of us. I need you to make sure that your chin um, is not poking to the ceiling. And, and if you need more pillow height, give yourself more pillow height. All right. If it's comfortable to let your eyes close, please let your eyes close. Taking that breath, allowing the exhale to settle you into your final rest. If you're still seated in your chair upright, absolutely fine. Just nestle your bum to the back edge of the chair and allow the back seat to support you. Bring your awareness to your breath. I want you to notice it fill in your body. Notice it infusing into each cell like a beautiful thick fog just rolling across the countryside. That fog in filled with all the best nutrients and all the best immunity builders that our body needs. And you have just spent an hour in service of expanding and allowing this vitality to just um, be able to access all parts of your body.
Just notice the sensation of your body receiving your breath. It fills, it expands. And notice the sweet grounding exhale as your body releases everything that no longer serves it well. I want you to notice on that exhale that your body is letting go of everything that it needs to live. It is letting go of its last breath and it is trusting. It is trusting the body to know when that next expansion, when that next inhale is necessary again. And just notice the trust of your body to do that full release, that full letting go. And feel the receptivity of the body as it allows the current of air to draw in again, filled with prana, filled with vitality, filled with life force. And think of our world right now and know that these natural laws apply to our world as well. And the contraction that is happening in our world will be followed by an expansion. That every contraction offers the body, the organism, an opportunity to release whatever is not serving its well, it well to release and let go of anything that is not in is its highest interest. Create space. Every exhale creating space for the expansion that is to follow. For the new, the potential, the opportunity of the next inhale. And then just notice the microcosm of your body moving in trust of that inhale, of that exhale, of that retraction, contraction, and that expansion. And just feel your awareness expand to include our whole planetary contraction and expansion. And may it have, may we have the same trust. The same trust that expansion will follow that we have in the next inhale that follows. Now, if this is feeling absolutely delightful to you right now, and you would like, like to stay and let this Shavasana continue for another 20 minutes, you feel free. <laughs> Have a nap, enjoy, allow yourself to drift off to sleep, whatever. <sighs> and if it feels complete, if you are just feeling satisfied and happy with the movement that you've put in your body today, then just let movement, fingertips and toes, Start to wiggle. Let movement come back into your body. Stretching your arms and legs. Bringing yourself back. Hi. <laughs> Aww. Well, so good to see you guys today. Oh, Fern, you made it on. Perfect. Hi, Miss Elizabeth. Yeah. Oh, thanks for joining me today, everyone. I appreciate it. It was so fun to feel the community, even though we were physically separated. So namaste. Enjoy.